everyone. Hello, my name is Julian and I'm a PhD candidate at the University of Applied Art in Vienna. I'm part of a doc team sponsored by the Austrian uh, Academy of Sciences uh, called the Various Stories of Ephesus. It's, we are three members. Uh, one of them is studying the geophysical part and c concerns with what's not visible in Ephesus. The other one with the restoration and I'm doing the heritage part which is mostly this presentation, like an overview, since we started the project in June 2018. So, <clears throat> the ancient city of Ephesus was transformed by natural processes and human interventions into a site of memory at which stories are, are told. The Ephesus of today is nevertheless not simply preserved, but instead is artificially created. Various narratives are still, still exist and depends on who's telling them, in this case, archaeologists, restorators, local community, national, national uh, uh, stories, or tourist uh, guides. Additionally, the cultural complexity in Ephesus uh, is it also influenced by its Greek or Roman past, uh, its location in the Republic of Turkey, and the fact that it's been excavated by an Austrian mission for over 120 years. Uh, Ephesus is located in western Turkey next to the uh, city of Selçuk, the nowadays Selçuk, and in ancient times was one of the most important cities in Asia Minor. Uh, nowadays it's one of the biggest excavations uh, in the world as well, but also one of the most visited archaeological parks with approximately 2 million visitors every year. <coughs> the ruins of the ancient city were never c completely covered by soil, and they already aroused interest of travelers and researchers since like fifth, uh, the late of fifth cent 15th century. The first excavations were conducted by the British Museum. Uh, John Turtle was looking for one of the seven wonders of the world, the Artemisian. But uh, soon after, they, they ran out of funds. And then from 1895, the Austrians took over the excavations with small breaks. Uh, the scientific focus of the research was strongly influenced by the respective excavation directors throughout history. A collaboration between archaeologists and conservators did not exist at the beginning of the activities. Extensive rebuilding of the ancient uh, ruins and intensive excavations led, led to a radical alteration of the appearance of the city. So nowadays, Ephesus is like a small laboratory of restoration. You have different techniques. Uh, some of them were done in touristic purposes. Some of them are properly done, especially the latest. And since 2015, uh, Ephesus is uh, on UNESCO World Heritage List. The research aim, the common goal of this plan project is to demonstrate through an interdisciplinary analysis which parameters and reasons are crucial for the image of Ephesus as it is presented today and how and why it changed over the course of its long period of research. Particular attention will be paid to the methodologies and research strategies which were used and which were strongly formed by individuals as well as administrative guidelines and social circumstances. Cultural heritage is fundamental to the identity and human dignity of communities, and it's an integral feature of every landscape that we as archaeologists explore, excavate, study, or redevelop. The way we engage with communities uh, and stakeholders to protect and manage the heritage of archaeological sites and landscapes greatly affects the quality of our relationships with those communities. Uh, hence, uh, and positive relationships uh, with those communities help the engagement with the heritage places and a better protection of, of those. And although Ephesus is it's a major site in Turkey, uh, no, ext no extended cultural heritage studies were done. Uh, just a few studies on tourism, and but uh, compared with other uh, uh, world heritage sites as Angkor Wat or Petra, there's not much. So I believe that this is why it's necessary, uh, this uh, research was necessary in order to fill this gap, but also to highlight differences between archaeological si uh, world heritage sites and also compare them. The study focuses on the role of the excavation at the world heritage sites in the life of the local community, um, <coughs> explores the effect of cultural heritage processes of local identity formation, remedy the current lack of data and insights concerning archaeological heritage management, 
designing community engagement projects, but also impact the impact of mass reason. Uh, we, uh, these are the three overarching questions of uh, all our three projects. And that's visibility and eligibility alterations, agents and agency. I'll just walk you through all of them now. <coughs> the problem of visibility and eligibility of FSOs, uh, it has been strongly shaped by archaeologists, conservators, and architects. The eligibility of the ruined site is also addressed question, addresses questions dealing with the relative importance to the visible monuments in research, preservation, and communication, and their connection to the non-visible monuments. To the case of alteration, uh, the, problem of, uh, the problem of ability or even willingness to represent historical processes and settlement questions in the ruined city. The cause of alteration of Ephesus are found in natural environment, since it's a really, uh, it's an area where earthquakes happen quite often. But it's also human interventions and the develop that has not yet been concluded. Today, no romantic ruined landscape, untouched by human hand, informs the character of Ephesus, but instead it's a concentration of excavated areas, conserved buildings, and reconstructions that attract tourists. The third overarching theme is that of agents and agency. Ultimately, individuals and groups are responsible for the appearance and narratives of this ancient site. The impact of Ephesus provokes reactions not only within the scientific community, but also in the public realm as an identity enhancing power, but also as a cash cow since tourism is one of the main revenues of the site. The research questions will deal with the influence of individuals and groups to de the development of research strate strategies and methods in the area of field archaeology, preservation, and cultural heritage management. As well, Ephesus is a really wide uh, site, and in order to fit all four of us, we also choose four specific case studies where, our, where we can apply this interdisciplinary approach to it. Uh, the first case study is the antiquity urban districts, form, form, which usually form the character of the city. Today, there are architectural colleges of put-together ensembles. The questions will deal with the comparison of the ancient city quarters and the modern re-erected ensemble. If the ancient urban image finds expression in the modern presentation, and if not, is this mediated to the visitors? Uh, the public space was the center of social interaction in antiquity. In this regard, plazas and streets attain particular significance, which is also valid for the phases of reconstruction and presentations of ruins. Uh, if the con uh, will be asked if the concepts and the appearance of the reconstructed plazas reflect the original significance and dimensions of the plazas in antiquity, and what role do those play nowadays? Uh, the third case study, study focuses on Christianity. Uh, and already since antiquity, Ephesus was one of the most important pilgrimage destinations uh, in the ancient world and ho housed a lot of cha chapels, basilicas, and monasteries. But only a few of them are excavated. And with the geophysical survey prospections, a lot more Christian structures can be detected. The two structure, largest uh, church sites, the Church of Mary and the Basilica of St. John on the Ias Luke Hill, they've been reconstructed and restored and partially reconstructed, actually. Additionally, they are available for the celebration of masses and therefore location for the extensive pilgrimage tourism in Ephesus. Uh, even uh, the Pope was there on two occasions and gave a mass during the celebration of Mary. And from uh, on this... Uh, Questions will be, how does the Christian sacred topography of Ephesus can be reconstructed, and how does it shape the landscape, and what role do the Christian monuments play with tourism? For the basis of the individual research, and by answering those research questions as a team, we are able to illustrate the development of the Christian sacred landscape in Ephesus, from its expansion in the late antiquity to the conserved re erect constructs we find today as in modern usage and significance. And later, latest, the latest case study, it's a Byzantine city quarter, which it's a project that started in 2011, and it's supposed to finish this year, and hopefully two weeks. Um, and this represents a new approach of an integrated research, research strategy in Ephesus. Uh, it's a project that combined archaeology, restoration, and heritage management as early as the beginnings, the planning stages. And it will be constantly supposed to re-evaluation. It's 
probably going to be transformed and is going to be put on the tourist path in a couple of years when they'll do the arrangements to it. Uh, to what concerns cultural landscapes and intercultural dynamics at Ephesus, there are a few uh, cases where contesting values are clashing or they go hand in, or va values that in theory would be contesting, but they go hand in hand. So, the, for example, the case of Shininje, which is a village that was um, populated by a Greek population, but which since 1923, when this exchange that was mentioned earlier, um, it was repopulated with the Turkish community. And they haven't changed none of the traditions, and they still look a bit back to their Greek heritage, although there's no, there was no continuity in it. And then there are other examples as the House of Virgin Mary or the Cave of Seven Sleepers, which both represent uh, values of Christianity and Islam. They're both pre presented in, in the Quran and it attracts annually pilgrimage from both sides. And unfortunately, this is just an overview. There's no preliminary results, but hopefully in three years I can come and present more results. So thank you for your attention.